Today, we celebrate the solemnity of all saints. All were called, as we are also called, to live and love well in our daily lives. Let us give thanks for those who have gone before us and who now intercede for us before God. Let us rejoice with them. All you saints of God, pray for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have
Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, a warm welcome to the live cast of this Mass as we celebrate the Solemnity of All Saints, the 1st of November, 2020. Our entrance antiphon. Let us all rejoice in the Lord as we celebrate the feast day in honor of all the saints at whose festival the angels rejoice and praise the Son of God. I invite you to stand, dear sisters and brothers, and sing with all your heart our entrance hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Bless you, 
we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you, for which we earnestly long through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, saw another angel rising where the sun rises, carrying the seal of the living God. He called in a powerful voice to the four angels whose duty was to devastate land and sea. Wait before you do any damage on land or at sea or to the trees until we have put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Then I heard how many were sealed, 144,000 out of all the tribes of Israel. After that, I saw a huge number, impossible to count, of people from every nation, race, tribe, and language. They were standing in front of the throne and in front of the Lamb, dressed in white robes and holding palms in their hands. They shouted aloud, Victory to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels who were standing in a circle round the throne, surrounding the elders and the four animals, prostrated themselves before the throne and touched the ground with their foreheads, worshipping God with these words, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength to our God forever and ever. Amen. One of the elders then spoke and asked me, Do you know who these people are, dressed in white robes, and where they have come from? I answered him, You can tell me, my Lord. Then he said, These are the people who have been through the great persecution, and they have washed their robes white again in the blood of the Lamb. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Such are the men who seek your face, 
Such are the men who seek your face, O Lord. The Lord is the earth and its fullness, the world and all its peoples. It is he who set it on the seas, on the waters he Such are the men who seek your face, O Lord. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The man with clean hands and pure heart, who desires not worth things. Such are the men who seek your face, O Lord. He shall receive blessings from the Lord and reward from the God who saves him. Such are the men who seek him, seek the face of the God of Jacob. Such are the men who seek your face, O Lord. The second reading, a reading from the first letter of John. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children. And that is what we are. Because the world refused to acknowledge him, therefore it does not acknowledge us. My dear people, we are already the children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. Surely everyone who entertains this hope must purify himself, must try to be as pure as Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand to welcome the gospel. And with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill. There he sat down and was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak. This is what he taught them. How happy are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy the gentle. They shall have the earth for their heritage. Happy those who mourn, they shall be comforted. Happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right, they shall be satisfied. Happy the merciful, they shall have the mercy shown them. Happy the pure in heart, they shall see God. Happy the peacemakers, they shall be called sons of God. Happy those who are persecuted 
in the cause of right. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, there is so much angst in the world today, in humanity, simply because we have lost our direction in life. Cut off from God, man has lost his identity. He cannot explain himself without faith in God. He cannot explain where he has come from or even the existence of this world. He does not know where he is going to. That is why today the man in this world is very confused. Even of his own gender, he is confused about what is the true meaning of marriage and family life. In spite of the affluence of this world, today man has no meaning, has no purpose. If there is any purpose, it is reduced simply to survival, having some pleasures in this world. Because without faith in God, there is no future for this creation. Whatever we do, whatever we accumulate, whatever achievements that we have accomplished, all these will be gone when we die. That is why even some people are skeptical of forming lasting relationships because they know a time will come when they will have to part from their loved ones. So everything is meaningless. This world we live in is a hopeless world. The only hope is in this life. But this life itself cannot give us meaning and purpose. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, today the Church celebrates All Saints Day to remind us who we are and what we are called to our ultimate calling in life. That our life is much more than just on this earth. The most we can live between 80 to 100 years. This life is very short compared to eternity. But this life will not just end on this earth. The celebration of the Feast of All Saints reminds us that we too will share with all the saints in heaven, rejoicing and worshipping God, praising Him, and sharing in His life and in His love. This is our ultimate destiny. But you see, the world has deceived us. If this world is hopeless, it is because people have removed God from this world. This is the real scourge and tragedy of secularism and atheism. My dear brothers and sisters, if we want to arrive at our destiny, or even before we arrive at our destiny, we need to be clear of our identity first. 
so that we can live out our identity and find real purpose in this life. And what is our true identity? St. John of second, in the first letter tells us, think of the love the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children, and that is what we are. Our greatest dignity is not just to be a creature of God, but we are called to be God's children. This is such a great privilege. To be called God's children means to share in His inheritance, to share in His life, to share in His love. It is for this reason that Scripture distinguishes us from other creatures and other creations. In the book of Genesis, man is a submit of creation. He is created in image and likeness of God, intellect and will and freedom to love or not to love. In Psalm 8, we are told we are created lesser than the God, but we are given dominion over the rest of creation. This is our great dignity to share in God's creative role in the world because we are different. Until we realize this, those people in the world today, unfortunately, they do not know why they are championing certain causes. We see in the world today, people are championing removal of death penalty, stop abortion, stop wars, stop killing. Do they realize that the reason why we cannot kill? Do they realize why when the church promotes a culture of life from conception to death? It is because of the very fact that we are God's children. We can kill other animals for food or for protection, but we can never kill a human being simply because the life is sacred and the life is immortal. That's the reason. But as I've said, many are championing all this and they're advocating other kinds of killing. They say death penalty must be removed, but they advocate abortion, euthanasia, simply because it is an ideology. If we truly believe in the sacredness and dignity of every human person, we will protect life from conception to death. My dear brothers and sisters, discovering our identity, therefore, is the first step. Who we really are in the eyes of God. But we cannot discover identity until we know God is our Father. That's why St. John tells us, the world refused to acknowledge Him, therefore it does not acknowledge us. If we do not see our brothers and sisters, that every human person is our brother and our sister, it is because we have not acknowledged that God is the Father of us all. When we hear terrorism, killing, wars, we are killing our brothers and sisters because we are all God's children. Everyone in this world is a child of God. And our brothers and sisters, I cannot believe that people can kill others or can destroy other nations and yet believe in God. 
is the same Father. If we truly believe we are sons and daughters of God, every human person, no matter who or she is, must be respected, must be protected, must be given a dignified life. That is why the earth resources are meant for all, not for some rich people, not for some countries. It is meant for all. My dear brothers and sisters, this is what precisely on these All Saints days, we are called to recover, rediscover identity as God's children, which we are already. But as St. John tells us, the future has not yet been revealed because we know when it is revealed, we shall be like Him more and more like God. To be a saint is actually to be the presence of God to others, to radiate His love, His mercy, His compassion. That is what it means to be a saint, to radiate the mercy and the compassion of Christ. That's the reason, my dear brothers and sisters, we cannot know the Father unless we know Christ. That's why in John's Gospel, chapter 14, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Because Jesus is the revealer of the Father's face, revealer of His love, of His mercy. Jesus reveals to us our true identity as sons and daughters of God. Jesus shows us that it is through suffering that we are purified, that we are perfected. And that through suffering and death, we will find new life. Death is not the end because Jesus conquered death by His resurrection. So if we want to discover who we are and who the Father is, Jesus is the answer to all the mysteries and readers of life and suffering. Truly, my dear brothers and sisters, today we are called to come to Jesus and to begin this process of recovering our identity. To know who we are is just the beginning. There are many Catholics, you know, or Christians, they go for these retreats and seminars and they're born again Christian, born again Catholics. After one week, they died again because premature death. When the baby is born, the baby needs to be nurtured, needs to be fed, needs to grow. In the second letter of Peter, in chapter 1, verse 10, he says, we must be eager to confirm that we have been elected by God. St. Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter, 14, chapter 4, verse 13, we need to grow into the maturity of the manhood of Jesus. So sainthood is a process. We are still in the process of purifying ourselves. We are saints in principle but we are becoming who we really are. And that is to be really like Jesus, to see Him face to face, means to say that we become identified so much with Jesus. That's why at our baptism, we, are normally, we normally choose a saint's name so that we too can imitate our saints, imitate all the saints who have gone before us, canonize and uncanonize saints so that we can go along this journey not to travel alone, but to travel with the community, the communion of saints. This is what today the first reading is telling us. We do not become saints alone. We become saints together, supporting each other, encouraging each other. That is why we need to pray for each other and pray with each other. It is only in this process of 
purifying ourselves, that we become truly the radiance of God's love. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us try to be saintly. Saintly means to purify ourselves. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The man with clean hands and pure heart. And this is what we need to do. Today in the gospel, Jesus gives us the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are the blueprint on how to live that life of love and mercy and compassion. The Beatitudes means the be attitudes. That means just be have the same attitudes of Jesus towards life, towards people, and then we will become saints. Not only when we die, already in this life, we will have a foretaste of the joy of being a saint in the making. Amen. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today we join our prayers with those of all the saints in heaven. They are models of holiness and authentic witnesses to Christ's gospel. Let us seek the intercession for our needs and the needs of the church and the world. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that it continue to be a school of holiness and a refuge for sinners who long to see God's face. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Pope Francis and our Archbishop William, that they continue to proclaim and witness to the message of Jesus in the Beatitudes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of all nations, that through the intercession and inspiration of the saints, they become more conscious of building a world of genuine peace and lasting justice for all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are persecuted for their religion, creed, or culture, that they find in the saints a source of strength and hope and safe refuge in the people around them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the hope of eternal life, that Christ raise them up to share in his glory with the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community of worship, that the intercession of Mary, our mother, the queen of all the saints, help us respond with greater generosity and fidelity to God, 
who calls us to grow in holiness daily. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause to pray for our own intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we pray that we will live the gospel of your Son more fully in spite of the challenges we face in life. May our desires be fulfilled to the intercession of your saints and martyrs who willingly suffered out of their deep love for you. We make this prayer confident in your mercy revealed by their heroic lives. Amen. Let us seek God's will more wholeheartedly by praying the prayer of generosity as we pray. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask reward, save that of knowing that I do your most holy will. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the mind sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord. And grant that Jesus has believed the saints to be already assured of immortality so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today by your gift we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church, through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Glory, O 
Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all your created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice will be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. <laughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. And profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. He make us of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we blessed Joseph, her spouse, we blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant. Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, or the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom we have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gathered to yourselves all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, at the passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave to you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance to your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a warm sign of peace. of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Act of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, today in the response to the Son, we are told that those who can come to the mountain of God 
are those who have clean hands and pure heart. Lord Jesus, you know my sinfulness, my unworthiness. I'm far from living the Beatitudes in my own life. And yet, Lord Jesus, in your mercy and love, you constantly reassure me of your forgiveness, of your mercy, that you are using all these occasions, all these failures to purify me in love and in truth. And that my real identity and destiny is with you. So Lord Jesus, as I prepare myself to receive you spiritually, since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to forgive my sins, all my negligences. Purify me with your love, so that I will be worthy to receive you into my heart. And so be one with the communion of sins on earth and in heaven, and most of all, to be able to radiate your love and your glory in the life that I lived. Amen. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your sins, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, the glory and joy of the saints, who has caused you to be strengthened by means of the outstanding prayers, bless you with unending blessings. Amen. Free through their intercession from present yields and form an example of their holy way of life, may you be ever devoted to serving God in your neighbour. Amen. So that together with all you may possess the joys of the homeland where Holy Church rejoices that her children are meted in perpetual peace in the company of the citizens of heaven. Amen. And with the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters, we'd like to apologize on behalf of our technicians for the technical glitch uh, just now. Um, I'm sure you all waited for a long time, 15 minutes. Um, our technicians have always been uh, 
doing their job well, but this time uh, we had some issues. So uh, they were very stressed out. Huh? So we forgive them huh? because today is All Saints Day. The Lord wants to use them to teach us two important lessons. Huh? Uh, 15 minutes for you waiting might seem to be eternity. And just imagine what is eternity in hell or in heaven, you better choose. Huh? If you cannot wait for 15 minutes, then to better think carefully. And on the other thing is, if you think you are already a saint, then a saints are patient people. Huh? They are always patient, tolerance, and with others. So let us uh, praise God. Uh, today, let us be joyful saints, and let us continue to share the joy of uh, having faith in Christ, our love, our compassion for others. Amen. And dear sisters and brothers, we also want to express our gratitude for your generosity all these months. And for those among us who can, let us continue to support our parishes, our church organizations and charities. And you can do this by going to catholic.sg slash to make your contributions. Thank you very much and God bless you. Let us now turn to our Blessed Mother and pray the Salve Regina. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Ducedo, Et Spes Nostra Salve. A Te clamamus, Ex Unes Filii Heve, Jesus Piramus, Gementes et Flentes, in ag lacrimarum vale. Ea ergo, Advocata Nostra, Illus Tuus Misericordes Oculos, Ad nos converte. Et Iesum, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostende. O
thank you for worshiping with us today, dear sisters and brothers. A gentle reminder to continue to join us for our live casts, our mass live casts, that is, every weekday at 12 p.m. and, of course, on Sundays at 10. And don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the bell icon so that we can send you our latest videos. Have a blessed weekend.
light. It brings sight in the darkness and warmth in the cold. We are all made to be bearers of light, you and I. Some of us were made big, some small, some colorful, some pure. We all come in different shapes and sizes, but one thing we have in common is we are all designed by the same maker. He who formed us designed us for one fundamental purpose, like Mary, to be a bearer of Christ's light to the world, to illuminate hope to those in darkness, and to bring joy to those who are suffering, healing to those who are hurting. Many are still sitting, waiting in darkness, having not received the light. In the Gospel of Matthew, it says, You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. Likewise, let your light shine forth to others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Just as we have freely received the light, let us freely give of ourselves in faith and thankfulness, each according to our talents and lessons, to build a vibrant evangelizing and missionary church each one of us humbly coming together with our lights to show the light of Jesus to all. Let us pray, act and give, sharing our light to build a church today for tomorrow, to be a church that has never shone brighter than before. With gratefulness, we thank you for your continued support and spirit of generosity as we work together to build a more vibrant, evangelizing and missionary church. Visit catholicfoundation.sg